Hello and welcome. I'm Victoria, family worker for Contact in Wandsworth. We are a charity organisation that have been supporting families uh, who have a disabled child or a child with additional needs in Wandsworth for over 25 years. You can see on the screen here our address and email. Uh, if you know of anyone who would benefit from support, uh, please do take this information and pass it on. Uh, families can get in touch with us directly about our work to find out more. We're a national organisation at Contact and have a website with lots of information and resources for families, a free helpline that families and practitioners can call, as well as guides and Facebook pages um, and lots more. So please do take a look at those. Today's webinar, Toilet Training in the Early Years, has been brought to you in partnership with Wandsworth Children's Centres uh, and other services working to support families in the borough. This webinar, Toilet Training in the Early Years, is aimed at any uh, parents wishing to find out information about how to start toilet training to get their little one ready for nursery. So this is aimed at, at all children, regardless of their needs. So this webinar, we aim to answer these questions. With toilet training, what are we aiming for? When is your child ready? How to build their skills? How to start toilet training? And where to go for further support? So with toilet training, what are we aiming for? So children are able to control their bladder and bowels when they're physically ready and when they want to be dry and clean. So most children will reach a stage where they want to be more comfortable and they want to get those independence skills. Saying that each child of course is unique and they develop at their own pace. Below are some ages and stages that you can use as a guide to understand at what point your child develops the skills they need to control their muscles um, and to get ready for toilet training. So by age one, uh, most babies have stopped doing a poo at night. By age three, most children are dry most days. Of course, there are the odd accidents, especially when they're really busy doing something they enjoy um, or feeling a bit anxious example. By age four, most children are reliably dry during the day and ages three to five, children learn to stay dry through the night with occasional bedwetting. So typically parents uh, start the toilet training process around age two and a half to three, uh, but this varies for each child. And it's really important to pay attention to when they're ready and go at their own pace. So toilet trained. This process happens both inside and outside the body. So to give us an idea of what to expect, these are the processes that happen inside the body a bit of a biology section here. So the bladder fills with urine. For a child aged two to four, that happens every two hours, approximately. As that bladder fills up, and when full, the brain receives the message that it's full. The child recognises the sensation. They hold their muscles until they reach the toilet. Um, they have a wee, empty their bladder, 
muscles then contract and the bladder refills and the cycle is repeated. So I think what's helpful here to keep in mind is that it does take around two hours for a child's bladder of this age that we're thinking about here today to fill up. So if you're toilet training and you're taking your child to the toilet every 10 minutes, that is going to be too often and they won't be getting that message that their bladder is full. And, and that's the that's the message that we want them to understand is that feeling when they have a full bladder means go to the toilet. So continuing our biology section, um, this one is a bit more squeamish. So the poo makes its way through the colon and this is where all the water is removed. Uh, and as it moves through, it becomes that sort of firm and soft sausage shape, which is the ideal shape of the poo if it's got lots of fibre in there. When it moves into the rectum, this is where the sensation is felt. So again, the brain receives the message. And here either the child evacuates the poo or delays. So if they delay, the poo moves back into the colon and here the sensation stops. So this uh, helps us to understand partly why children can control their bowels before their bladder. So the process outside the body is that the child can independently complete the full sequence involved when going to the toilet. So a toilet trained child can recognise the sensation of needing a wee or a poo. They can control their muscles. They can communicate that they need to go. Um, they can undress. They can reach and sit comfortably on the toilet. They can do their business um, and then they can flush the toilet, redress, wash and dry their hands. So there is actually a lot involved in that full sequence and there are a lot of skills that a child is learning to become toilet trained. So when is your child ready to start toilet training? So these are some signs to look out for that your child is ready. So they're aware when they're having a wee or a poo. And you could notice this when they are hiding behind the sofa, for example, to go and have a poo, or they're doing the wee dance and fidgeting around. Any behaviours like that are indicating to you that they're aware of what's happening. Or they might be showing discomfort when a nappy is wet or soiled and asking to be changed. They might be waking from a nap with a dry nappy or staying dry for at least two hours. Again, here they're showing that they're developing that muscle control that's needed. They might be showing an interest in the potty or the toilet. Um, most likely showing interest in you going to the bathroom. Intentionally communicating. So instead of you reading their body language, they might be starting to tell you what's happening and what they need. They can sit still. So this one is a, a difficult one, isn't it? Um, but it's really helpful if they have some capacity for sitting still, um, even with uh, some distractions or some toys, you know, that's that's what's needed to start this potty training. And can they follow simple instruction? So the barriers to getting ready 
So limited diet or dehydration. So, of course, those things lead to constipation, which is no fun at all. This is something that you will be aware of um, and is quite common sense, but it really can become a bit of a circle that's difficult to break, where a child feels pain or any or discomfort um, and then they withhold and, and hold in their poo and become quite fearful and resistant of having a poo. This kind of constipation can also impact bladder control and it can also look like uh, diarrhoea. So what happens if a child gets really backed up with constipation and um, the poo needs to come out at some point and so it comes out quite liquidy around the poo that is backed up. So not very nice um, and it's really difficult then to break that pattern of fear that the child has around having a poo because it's so uncomfortable for them. So it's really worth thinking about their diet and their hydration. So it's recommended uh, for one litre of water and 15 grams of fibre a day. Um, so do keep that in mind. Of course, this is sometimes easier said than done. Lots of, lots of children are picky eaters um, or you know, only drink you know, really tasty juices, etc. So you know your little one, um, but, but do keep it in mind. I've had lots of parents who've got really creative ways of hiding um, vegetables in things. And, you know, of course, vegetables aren't the favourite, are they, for, for little children who've still got all their taste buds and can really taste all of that bitterness. Um, but a small change to diet can really make a big difference. And it's really worth thinking about before starting the toilet training. Another barrier to a child becoming ready for toilet training could be any unmet developmental needs. So whether that's a communication need or a physical or learning need that's not yet being supported. So if you have any concerns that your your child is not meeting their milestones as expected, then speak to health visitor or a GP about your concerns. Uh, you know, these needs need to be supported before beginning the toilet training journey. So this is your checklist to see, are they ready? So are they aware when they're having wee or poo? Are they showing discomfort when wet or soiled? Are they staying dry for at least two hours? Are they communicating? Are they able to sit still for a few minutes? Are they following simple instructions? If the answer is no and they're not ready, that's okay. Uh, there'll be lots of things you're doing all of the time that are building skills towards getting them ready for toilet training. And if your, does, if your child does have um, additional needs, then those needs can be supported and they can toilet train at their own pace. So how to build their skills towards toilet training. So getting ready and building up skills. Inner and outer body awareness. So labelling sensations they're feeling, so it could be when they're hungry, hot, cold, thirsty. Whenever you're uh, communicating with them about something that they're experiencing with their body, you're building that awareness they have of themselves, uh, which is really powerful and helpful um, for them to understand and start to recognise and relate what they're feeling and how to verbalise that. 
So this could be you're in the playground and you're noticing that they really love spinning on the roundabout and they don't like uh, sliding down the slide. So if you're uh, communicating that with them, then you're building awareness of the things, the sensations that they like and they don't like. A practical skill you can build with inner and outer body awareness. If your child is not recognising the sensation of feeling wet or soiled, you can try putting pants underneath their nappy to see if that helps them to feel the sensation. So if we think about a nappy, um, it gets really heavy, doesn't it? And doesn't necessarily touch the skin in the same way as as um, a pair of pants um, and for some children the heavy weight of a nappy can actually be quite reassuring and comforting um, and so changing that to a pair of pants can then be a bit more uncomfortable for them and they start to notice that sensation. Fine motor skills. So any of those um, lovely activities that you're already doing, so things like threading, building blocks, play-doh, um, puzzles, all of those little things are working towards the skills they need to be able to navigate dressing, washing hands, flushing the toilet, all of those parts of the toileting routine. And attention and listening skills, obviously a part of communication. So whenever you're playing uh, games that involve taking turns, you know, singing action songs, heads, shoulders, knees and toes, all of those things are building their attention and listening skills. So I'm drawing your attention to this here uh, to reassure that all of those things you're doing already, if they're not ready yet for toilet training, you're doing a lot of work in building up their skills. Um, and so keep going with those. So toilet training, how to start. So observe, prepare, show, do and review. So observe your child's behaviour and habits. So it's really helpful to spend some time uh, paying close attention to what your child's doing with their toileting. This is something that you're probably doing all of the time anyway. But if you can start to record some of this information, it's really helpful for the next steps in the process. So information like when are they having a pirouette? So what times of the day? Where are they in the environment? You know, are they hiding in a particular place? Um, are they stood up, running around? You know, all of this information is really helpful. What is the pirouette like? And what's the quality of it? Um, are they emptying their bladder fully? Um, are they pooing that nice, healthy, soft sausage shape? Or does it look um, more broken and small? All of that information is really helpful. How do they react before, during and after having a poo or wee? Are they comfortable or avoiding the bathroom, for, ex for example? Or they're quite curious and, and relaxed in the bathroom. There are some really great apps out there now where you can keep a record of this information. Obviously, you don't want to be carrying around a big clipboard or anything like that. Um, here are some examples of apps here on the screen. Um, we're not advocating any particular apps or equipment, though. These are just suggestions for you to take a look at. Prepare and plan. So using all of that information you have gathered um, and you know you want to be giving it a go over a couple of days so you can see if there are any patterns there. Um, at least a week would be great. It takes a bit of um, a bit of time and a bit of commitment to gather some information that you can use. But once you've got that, you can then use it to help with your planning. 
So it might be that you need to get some advice from healthcare professionals. So if you've noticed that your child is not emptying their bladder fully, for example, then uh, we would advise you go to the GP and get that checked out because there might be an underlying physical reason for that. Um, or if you've noticed that their poo is not is not quite um, that healthy size and shape, then you might need to make changes to their diet, in which case you can, if they're a really picky eater, you can go to the GP for a referral for dietitian support. Um, or it might be that you've noticed the environment needs changing. So, you know, some children, for example, find bathrooms quite scary places, you know, whether it's because there's a noisy fan in there, um, or it's, you know, very smelly of cleaning products, um, you know, so it could be looking at the environment itself. So you can choose whether you want to habit train or use their natural rhythm. So habit training is where you uh, take the child at regular intervals throughout the day to the potty or toilet. Whereas using the natural rhythm um, is when you know that your child has, say, a poo at four o'clock every day. So you're going to guide them to the potty or toilet just before four o'clock every day. So using the information you've gathered, you should be able to work out which is the best approach for your child. You can also choose um, and, and prepare yourself if you want to do a gradual approach to toilet training or um, a nappy in the bye-bye box. So a nappy in the bye-bye box, this is just getting rid, going cold turkey if you like, getting rid of the nappy completely, um, which some parents choose to do. Well, the gradual approach would be to do it step by step. Um, so for example, you could sit the child on the potty using, um, so they're still wearing their nappy, so wearing the nappy on the potty, and then the next day, undo the nappy, sit them on the potty while they're having a wee poo. And then the next day, uh, loosen the nappy whilst they're sat on the potty. And then the, the next day, remove the nappy completely and sit them on the potty. So that approach works really well for children who, you know, um, need a bit longer to adapt to changes in their routine um, or are quite fearful of doing a poo without the nappy. As I said before, it's really reassuring to wear that kind of heavy, warm nappy for some children. For other children, if you can tell that they're really, you know, really curious about uh, becoming more independent with their toileting, um, or they just work better understanding um, what the boundaries are very clearly, this bye-bye box, um, and a parent actually told me about this uh, and it was her name for their bin. So they used this approach when they were weaning their child from uh, their dummy. So they said dummy in the bye bye box and put the dummy in the bin. And for that child, that really made sense and helped him to understand that, um, you know, that dummy was not available anymore. So if, if you think that kind of approach would work for your child, then you can just go go for it and remove the nappy and get going on toilet training. So at this stage, you're thinking about these options and um, preparing with which you want to choose. You want to think about as well the keywords that you're going to use. Um, so whether that's potty time or uh, wee wee, whatever the words are that you want to use. If you're using visuals. So for some children who need support with their communication, it could be that you're using a photograph of the toilet and guiding them there. You want to think about what equipment you need to get ready and if you're using any particular rewards or motivators. So we've got some examples um, on the next slide. You want to think about when is a good time to start. So you want to pick a time without too many um, changes and stresses 
for you and also for them. Of course, it's it's um, easy to plan, but life can throw um, things at you. But for example, you wouldn't want to start toilet training, you know, when you're moving house or you've got a new pet, you know, those kinds of things. So lots of parents do pick the summer holidays because it gives you a nice big window of opportunity. And of course, hopefully we'll have a bit of sun and um, it's good for doing the washing as well. So think about when is a good time. And once you've got your plan together, you want to share that with anyone that is um, supporting or giving care to your child. So whether that's a childminder or a grandparent, for example, it's really important that everyone is on the same page. So it has the same information. So here um, are some examples of uh, equipment, if you like, things that you can use on your toilet training journey. So we've got a nice clear um, example here of a potty chart. So you can see that this child is working for four stars and then maybe they get a nice reward, um, you know, some time with bubbles or whatever it is that they really enjoy. So you can see they're being rewarded for having a wee, having a poo and washing their hands. Um, you can get loads of different uh, sticker charts, reward charts out there, I'm sure you're aware. Um, so use whatever motivates your little one. So we've got some examples here of um, a fidget toy, so like a squeezy ball. So this could be helpful for a child that finds it difficult to sit still um, when they're practicing on the potty or the toilet to give them something that they can fidget with, um, you know, keep themselves still. There's also a timer there, so that could be helpful for children who are a bit anxious about sitting and not quite sure um, what's expected of them. It helps them to understand that this is how long you've got to sit and practice for. Uh, which can be quite reassuring for some children. So another sensory uh, toy, if you like, we've got here in the top left is it's a light that you can actually put inside the toilet bowl. So this could be useful for a child who is quite fearful of the toilet. You know, um, if we're thinking about it from a little one's perspective, a big toilet can be quite scary, you know. Um, they splash, they make lots of noise, and we're not quite sure, you know, what's going on with them. So, you know, making it a bit more engaging and um, changing the relationship they have with the toilet, if you like. Uh, it might also be useful for boys who are a little bit further along with their toilet training, who are learning to aim in the toilet, you know, it gives them a nice clear visual of of what to where to aim um, and then we've also got some training pants here so these are designed to absorb um, most of the liquid but to still feel wet to the touch uh, so this is really helpful for building that awareness um, as we mentioned earlier there's a visual prompt here so if your child is using any kind of um, visual for routine then you can use that um, with the toileting as well. So this one is a now and next. So now is the toilet and then next is that really motivating iPad or tablet time. Um, and here we've got some examples of equipment that you can use with the toilet and then there's a potty there. So it's completely up to you whether you want to use potty or toilet. Uh, some children just naturally prefer one or the other. Um, Obviously, there are benefits with the potty. It's portable. You can move it around. And some children really like that ownership. You know, it's their potty. Um, whereas some children, they just want to get get going straight to the toilet. They're quite interested in the bathroom and want to feel that uh, kind of independence and joining in with what you do in the bathroom. Um, so it's about, you know, using the information you've gathered and you know your child which works best. So for some children who find transitions quite difficult, it might be helpful to just go straight for the toilet. Um, you know, if, if, if your child is somebody who gets quite attached to 
objects you know they really really like a their favorite water bottle for example and they they find that very difficult to use a different water bottle you know they might then find it difficult to move from the potty to the toilet so it might be worth thinking about whether you want to skip the potty and go straight to the toilet so once you've decided um, what's going to work best for your child then you can do some research on potties um, and find one that you think will work you know it could be uh, something that you think they'll find quite engaging or it could be that you want to get one that looks a bit more like a toilet um, if you are going straight to the toilet then there are some things to bear in mind so you can see here in the top right that there's a step and seat um, on top of the toilet so this gets the child in the right position to have a poo so you need the knees to be above the hips ideally um, that is how you know humans really are built to have a poo um, it's also really reassuring for a child to have you know somewhere to put their feet and not be dangling on the toilet and to have the seat that made a bit smaller um, so that you know it feels comfortable and it's not that kind of scary will I fall in <gasps> feeling so you want to Think about that. Also, of course, you need a step so that they can reach, so they have that, um, you know, sense of independence, and they can access the toilet easily. You've also got there at the bottom a toilet seat cover. So, just thinking about, you know, if your child really feels quite safe and secure in their nappy, um, sitting on a hard plastic seat is a very different uh, feeling. So for some children, they might benefit from, you know, transitioning between nappy and, and seat with something that's a bit softer um, and more familiar. Show them what to do. So take them with you to the toilet um, if you can. I know that might be your only couple of minutes break um, if you're lucky. Chances are they're probably with you in there already. Um, but if you can allow them to see, you know, what you're doing in the, in, the, in the bathroom, on the toilet and show them the full routine, it's really, really helpful because, you know, they're really interested in what you do anyway. So you are the ideal uh, teacher and model. You can also reinforce with books, um, apps, etc. And I've got a few examples on the next slide. So building association uh, with the bathroom or the new equipment. So if you're using the toilet or the potty, um, you could think about introducing that equipment. So they want to be familiar and get used to it first before using it. So to build association, for example, you could change their nappy in the bathroom um, so that they get used to toileting is happening always in the bathroom now and then you can put the poo from the nappy in the toilet and flush it so they start to see that part of the process and associate that that is what happens um, you can practice sitting on the toilet or the potty so without any pressure um, first just get them used to sitting on this new this new object that they're not used to um, and you know do something that they enjoy whilst they're in the bathroom or practicing sitting so it's about creating those positive experiences so that they feel you know relaxed um, and so these are some examples of uh, tools that you can use to show your child what is expected of them during the toilet training so we've got some dolls here that are designed for toilet training. Uh, you can use their favourite teddy if they've got one and you know put it on the toilet or the potty and talk through what happens and what is expected. Um, there are some apps out there. There's this one here with Elmo, which looks um, pretty cool. If, if your child is a Sesame Street fan, that could be a winner. Uh, there are lots of books. Um, out there too so if your child does have a favorite character um, do a bit of googling there's a good chance that there could be a toilet training book um, or video with them 
YouTube has got lots of resources, including songs about toileting. So if, you're, if your little one is into music and singing, you know, then you can use that to help, um, you know, get them thinking about this new routine. This video here is called Tom's Toilet Triumph. Um, and it's a, a video that's designed for children with additional needs um, to support them with toilet training. It's really great because it's very clear. So visually it shows sort of exactly what happens in the bathroom um, and it uses you know, the correct language for the body parts that are used during toilet toileting. Um, so take a look at that. And I think it's even useful just for you to think about you know, the kind of information that your child might benefit from when you're explaining what toilet training is. So I think, you know, the more information you can give them that makes sense to them, that's engaging for, for them, the better. You know, this is a really new routine to them, so they, they need to understand what's expected um, so that they can uh, start practicing. So next, is the do. So do the toilet training. So you've done all of that preparation um, and now it's time to get going. So you want to focus on the daytime first. As we uh, discussed at the beginning, a child develops nighttime um, muscle control sort of really around ages three to five, four to five, five reliably. So you wanna start with the day first. So prepare what your child is going to be wearing during the time of toilet training. So you want things that are easy to pull up and down. So no dungarees, um, you know, trying to make your, your, your life as easy as possible with that. Encourage and guide. So here is where you're going to be guiding them either to the potty or toilet. So I would recommend not asking a child if they need to go, but, but encouraging them and guiding them to go. So it could be every two hours uh, for a wee or every 20 to 30 minutes after food, or you're using their natural um, habits, their rhythm that you've observed and encouraging and guiding them just before you can see that they need to go. So stay positive. So if they're distressed, um, you don't want to be trying to do the toilet training routine. Uh, so just let things calm down, you know, let them have a poo in their normal way and then try again when they're calm. Celebrate success. So of course, you know your little one the best and how they thrive. So some children love lots of energy and lots of praise and reward. And some children might just like a little high five or a sticker. So whatever works for your child, but celebrate each step. So even, you know, at the beginning when you're practicing sitting, you know, high five for good sitting on the potty, um, etc. Be consistent. So stick with your plan. So whether you're using visuals, a particular routine or particular words be consistent with them keep calm so accidents will happen it will feel like uh, two steps forward five steps back on some days so being really patient and nice with yourself um, so that you know that frustration doesn't show to your child and cause them stress too is really important you know for children this um, process can be, um, you know, it's, an, it's a new process. It can cause some anxiety or some stress for them. Um, and so we want to be staying positive and calm and encouraging, you know, and uh, avoiding any negativity that could um, feel sort of shaming for a child that's learning to toilet train. The next stage is to review the child's progress. So 
deciding on an end date. So don't just keep going um, and going. Pick a window of opportunity, like we said, maybe the summer holidays. And if it's not working, then stop and take a break. Um, and then you can go back through the steps. Uh, changes can be made. Um, you can seek more advice, more support, or you know, try to understand what's going on with your child's behaviour. If there's a challenge coming up, we you, you might just need um, you know a break, and they might just need a bit more time. Where to go for further support? So there's further advice and support. You can speak with your GP if you feel, you know, your child could be constipated or having a physical issue with their bladder control. Um, you speak with your health visitor if you feel your child is not in line with expected milestones. Um, you can also get that dietitian referral via GP as well if you think your child might need some support with their diet. Uh, there's a really great resource um, via ERIC. So they are a charity organisation that specialise in childhood um, bowel and bladder differences. Um, and they've got tons of information on their website around toilet training and also a helpline that you can call. Uh, the NHS has got guidance as well online about potty training that you can have a look at. Um, but if your child is working with a professional already, you know, just speak with them uh, if you feel that you need further advice and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. So here are some typical questions and challenges from parents who are doing toilet training. My child is scared of sitting on the toilet. This is a, a common challenge that parents face. So the toilet, as we've discussed, can be quite um, intimidating for a child. It's a new experience for them, so they need to understand what is expected. So show them why they need to sit on the toilet using, as I mentioned, the, you know, books, their teddies, ways that they will engage with, and understand. You can practice without any pressure, so uh, just sitting on the toilet without needing to go for a pirouette. Think about making sure the toilet is comfortable, so with the right equipment, um, so with a step, so the feet are in the right place. Perhaps think about the seat and if that can be made smaller um, or softer. You could do something they enjoy on the, on the toilet, um, so you know, a, a, it could be blowing bubbles, listening to a song, something that they just find a positive experience that they can associate with sitting on the toilet. Give them lots of praise when they've done some sitting. You know, you can use a timer so that they understand they don't need to sit there forever. Um, and just give them time. Show them when you're on the toilet and that you're OK and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So. The next one, they will only poo in the nappy or the bath. So this is related question. Perhaps this child um, is avoiding pooing on the toilet because they're scared of the toilet. Uh, or it could be that they are pooing standing up. And so sitting down is a very different experience, isn't it? Um, or it could be that they're quite anxious of having a poo. So they prefer going in the bath when they're nice and relaxed, their muscles are relaxed, they're warm. So some things to think about here could be that they might not be aware what is happening yet. They might just need more time before they can start the toilet training. If they are hiding or they're showing awareness that they're having a poo, um, then it could be about making them feel more relaxed about having a poo. So I think poo is challenging for children. If we think about the sensation of having a poo, it's a much louder sensation in the body than having a wee. So it can be quite um, um, worrying for a child to get used to that feeling. 
And also some children feel like a poo is still a part of them. You know, they're used to having a poo and it being in the nappy. Um, and now all of a sudden it's being flushed down the toilet. So really helping a child to understand the process um, so that they can become emotionally ready as well as physically ready uh, can really help reduce that anxiety around having a poo. So for this child, it could be guiding them to the bathroom to poo in the nappy um, and making it a very calm, positive experience. And then the next day, guiding them to the bathroom to sit on the toilet in the nappy and making that a positive experience, celebrating. And then the next day, you could loosen the nappy and the next day, remove the nappy completely. So that gradual approach might work well for a child who's quite anxious about having a poo on the toilet. And the last one here, my child is not showing signs of being ready for potty training, but nursery say he can't start in nappies. So, of course, it's a parent's duty um, to attempt the toilet training with their child. You know, it's a parental responsibility there. But education settings do have a statutory duty to support children who have a health condition or developmental needs. Um, and so if a child is struggling with toilet training, uh, that is a developmental need. And so settings should be working with you as parents on the toilet training. Um, and so I would encourage communication with the nursery um, for this parent. You know, it might be that there's some need for further support there for this parent. Um, but there, there is a message, isn't there, about nurseries or education settings not wanting to toilet train children. Um, but, you know, if there is a need for support there, um, then it's most likely that they will want to work with you as parents to make sure that that child has all the skills they need. So lastly, toilet training steps to success. So to recap, one, check the are they ready checklist. If yes, then continue. If no, no problem, you're building their skills. Number two, observe and record behaviours and toilet habits. Number three, seek advice. If there's a physical um, concern or something you've noticed, get that checked out. Number four, plan, adapt the environment, prepare equipment and let everyone know. Five, show what is expected of them, model and reinforce in ways that make sense to them. Six, do, pick a good window of opportunity, be consistent and use what works for your child. Seven, review, is it time to take a break? Go back through the steps and make some changes. And number eight, most importantly, keep calm and be kind to yourselves. Um, the toilet training process you know, can be a big pressure for parents. Um, you know, you might have a tendency to compare your child with other children and, and how they're developing. But please remember, this process is different for each child. Um, there's lots of support out there for you and be patient and, and gentle with yourselves um, and your little one will get there. So good luck. Be confident in your knowledge about what works for your child. Remember you're not alone if it's taking longer than expected or you're feeling stressed or stuck then please ask for help. Um, we really appreciate your feedback. Um, so there's a survey link here. If you can click on that, um, then we would love to hear from you. Okay, thank you.